Greetings and welcome to Goods In number 21, I think it is. These are the two latest addition, additions to the family. And um, I only actually need one of these. Uh, I'm only going to unbox one of these, but these are, these are the same. Uh, you may remember a couple of uh, months ago, I did an unboxing of this. This is the Motorola XT420. This is just a standard PMR446 walkie-talkie, essentially, uh, designed for, I suppose, um, companies and well, whatever you want, really, I guess. <laughs> Anyone who's using, um, who needs a 0.5 watt walkie-talkie. Well, this is, I guess, the closest equivalent, because this is a digital PMR446. It's the XT660D. And um, I've just got a couple of these because I want to try out digital PMR. So let's take a look at what you get in the box. Uh, I imagine it's going to be fairly standard, but I'm interested to see whether or not all the stuff is, you know, the same as on this and whether the two can be swapped out. So, you know, whether the batteries are the same or whether they're different. So I'll take a look at that in a second. All right, let's just zoom in a little bit on the box. So we get our incredibly thick manual here, which aren't always supplied actually with these radios. Um, I've had radios delivered from other companies who didn't provide a manual with them. They just sent them uh, in the boxes without this big, uh, big document. But uh, clearly this is in a shed load of languages. You've got a quick start guide there. And that is that. And then we have our standard, what I think is a fairly standard Motorola power supply. Let me just uh, hold that up to the camera. And uh, in fact, tell you what, what would be easier, wouldn't it, if I actually took it out of the bag? But it looks to me very much like a standard Motorola charger, which is nice. Good to see that there's some standardization here. So output, output uh, is 5 volts, so a USB sort of style output, 1.5 amps required on this one. And then we have the famous Motorola holster, which I thought I wouldn't like to start with, but actually I do really like this now. Um, so this is their holster idea that uh, it just means you can, you know, have this as the belt clip and well, let me just show you on here, you can pop it off and you can just have your radio like that if you want. You can just easily slot it in a holster like that. It works really well. I thought it'd be a little bit easy to release, but it isn't. It works, works very well. And let me just try, out of curiosity, let me just try and see whether these are the same. Yep. Yep, exactly the same. Good. Because that suggests that the batteries will be the same too. So there we go, our holster. And we get our language, our plugs here for different um, areas. And, and the charging base, which again, I think is standard. Yep, this is a standard. Motorola charging base. Do watch out. Uh, I think I mentioned this on the other video too. Do watch out with these if you buy them online and uh, you you can get them sometimes cheaply and they don't come with the charger, which is fine because sometimes people might have a lot of these and uh, you know you don't necessarily need a charger with it. But it's something to watch out for. If you see a cheap price on these, uh, do make sure that it comes with the charger if you happen to need it. And of course, the unit itself, which being digital is very different from this. Now, of course, you can get digital radios that are much simpler and much simpler like this. Uh, but uh, the benefit of digital, uh, digital PMR and digital and DMR is that you can send text messages and stuff and you can just communicate in different ways. So while these methods of communication are nothing in 2019 compared to the methods, the ways in which we communicate, You've got to remember that a walkie-talkie environment is designed to be robust and be used in any situation. If you've got your smartphone and the cell dies near you, you've got no reception. You're absolutely screwed, right? This is a big difference between a walkie-talkie radio sort of peer-to-peer, -peer essentially, as it would be with these. Uh, I'm not using any kind of repeater. So peer-to-peer radio environment and anything like a smartphone because I think the biggest thing people say is why on earth do you need something like this in 2019 when you can do all this stuff and more on a smartphone 
Well, of course you can, but you're entirely reliant on someone else's infrastructure. And that's a big deal in some cases. Uh, and also, it's just overkill for a lot of things, a smartphone. You don't want to be messing around when you can just press a button like this. You don't want to be messing around, pressing, like, going into apps that can crash and and uh, taking your gloves off and all those kind of things and worrying about breaking hundreds of pounds worth of equipment, you know, hundreds of pounds worth of smartphone equipment on, on a building site or something versus, you know, probably what, what this was 130 quid's worth of uh, walkie-talkie in this case, or in bulk, probably a lot cheaper. Anyway, let's take a look at the battery as well, because I am, this was the main thing I'm interested in on these. So we have 2,100 milliamp hour uh, battery, which I think is exactly the same battery as on these. In fact, I'm probably so similar, I'm going to mix them up. So let me just pop, let me just pop the battery off the back of the XT420. Oops. And I think we can safely say that those two are identical. In fact, I've just, I've even forgotten which was which now. <laughs> I'm going to go back and re-watch this video and realise I've put the new one on the walkie-talkie. Either way, it doesn't matter. So there we go, there's the battery. So, interestingly enough, this is 2,100 milliamp hour. You can buy radios from other companies that uh, put out 10 watts, and the batteries on them are only 2,200 milliamp hour. It makes me wonder how long a battery is going to last on a radio pushing, you know, presuming, reporting to push out 10 watts at 2,200 milliamp hour when this is only doing half a watt and uh, they've got basically the same capacity battery. It does make you wonder, doesn't it? All right, so for those of you who don't know, uh, the main difference, as far as I'm concerned anyway, the main difference between, um, digit between DMR and DPMR, so um, PMR446, digital, is the, uh, the way in which the channels are used. So one is um, time division multiple access, so TDMA. The other is FDMA, so frequency division multiple access. I'm not an expert in any of this. I've just done a bit of reading up and I hope that my information is accurate. So essentially, DPMR, these, these radios, split your 12.5 kilohertz bandwidth. So each, each channel on DPMR has 12.5 kilohertz of bandwidth. It splits that up into uh, two channels effectively and uses, so what would that be, 6.25 kilohertz, and uses those two channels separately to send two, effectively two channels of uh, data down at, uh, I think it's something like about five, five kilobits of data. TDMA, so DMR, splits the 12.5 kilohertz into time slots. So you, so you have one lot transmitting for like say 10 milliseconds and then your second lot transmitting for 10 milliseconds. And when that's all bundled together, you don't notice the difference. You're only actually effectively hearing transmissions for half the time. It's time split. And uh, there, that's the main difference between them. However, this is kind of nice in a way because you've got a dedicated frequency to use, you've got a dedicated channel, it's just a smaller bandwidth channel, but it does require some very, very stringent uh, spurious emissions control because otherwise you'd start, I guess you start uh, putting um, sort of spurious transmissions across into the other channel. Uh, so you've got to have very, very tight emissions on those, on that, uh, in that bandwidth to, uh, to be able to send data accurately down 6.25 kilohertz. That's as good as my understanding is. Sorry, it's not the best explanation. Hopefully I've got that pretty much right. If anyone can correct me on that, great. Uh, so let's take a, a quick look around the radio. Very similar to the X-T420. You've got your push to talk button there. You've got your two assignable buttons here, which can be programmed in software. You take a look at the video I did on the CPS software. You can see how you can program these buttons to do different things. Uh, the, the difference here is in digital mode, we have the ability to record the conversation and you've got a dedicated button for that record functionality there. And on the side here, we have where you can plug in a headset and what have you, which I can't even open. There we go. Um, you've got your non-standard, I suppose, connector. There's only one button on top and that turns it on because the rest of the controls, rest of the controls are done here through the display. 
which if I take this label off, you can see a little bit better. So I'll just zoom in a little bit. And I don't know how to use this radio. I've never used these before, but you can take a little closer look there. We've got um, channel one displayed. And there we can see the frequency we're on. Channel two. Is it going to show us the frequency as well? There's the frequency for channel two. But again, I don't know how to use this. I will cover that in a separate video. But there we go. There's an unboxing of the Motorola XT660D. These will, these are kind of standard, right? These are gonna work with the same chargers, the same docks, the same holsters as your other Motorola radios, it looks like. So uh, a lot of similarities between them, except this is DPMR. And I'll take a closer look at that in another video. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this useful. If you've got any questions, let me know and I'll see you soon.